Good afternoon, everyone. Um, one theme of any talk about Delaware is its size. It's small. As reflected in the state's motto, small wonder, Delaware is proud of its size. And much of how the state operates, including its court system and its pro-business culture, is very much uh, a function of its size. So how small is Delaware? A few statistics. It's the second smallest state geographically. It has fewer than one million residents and only three counties. Most of the population resides in Newcastle County, which is the northernmost county in which the city of Wilmington is located. And much of the, if not all, um, of the business and legal community is centered in Wilmington, just about a two hour Amtrak ride from here. Another identifying feature of Delaware, at least among Delawareans, is its status as the first state. The first state to ratify the US Constitution, that is. History says that Delaware acted quickly to ratify the Constitution, in part to protect its small statehood. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that that history and spirit of acting quickly in the interest of the state and its citizens, including its many corporate citizens, continues today and is one of the reasons Delaware has become the home to so many business entities. As is well known in the business world, Delaware has flexible statutes governing its corporations and other business forms. It has a strong court system and a well-developed body of corporate law. In the area of contract law, Delaware follows the principle of freedom of contract and adheres to the strict interpretation of business contracts. It is each of these factors which, at least in part, has resulted in Delaware's being the state of incorporation of more than one million business entities, more than its residents. And as Jerry mentioned, more than 50% of all publicly traded companies, including 60% of the Fortune 500, call Delaware their corporate home. No doubt, many of the lawyers in the room have clients which are Delaware companies, and some of the in-house and business people may work for Delaware companies, or for companies which have business dealings with Delaware companies. Hence our topic, the national business litigation practice in a small local court. First, a quick overview of the state court system and the judiciary. With respect to business litigation, it consists of the Court of Chancery and the Superior Court at the trial court level and the Supreme Court at the appellate level. A unique feature of Delaware's trial court system is its distinction between jurisdiction over actions at equity, which are brought in the Court of Chancery, and actions at law, which are brought in the Superior Court, and for our purposes here today, the Complex Commercial Litigation Division which is the division of the Superior Court, which handles business cases involving $1 million or more at stake. There is no intermediate appellate court in Delaware. Rather, all appeals go directly to the Supreme Court, and it provides one level of mandatory appellate review. So parties only have to appeal once, and they have a right to have their judgment reviewed. Like the state itself, the judges overseeing business litigation are a small group. The Supreme Court has five members. The Court of Chancery also has five members, the Chancellor and four Vice Chancellors. And while the Superior Court statewide consists of approximately 20 judges, only four of those judges are assigned to the CCLD. So in all, there are only nine judges handling business cases in the state's trial courts. Like any other organization, the court system is only as good as its people and its procedures. Each of the judges on the Court of Chancery and the CCLD has extensive business litigation experience or relevant judicial experience, and in many cases, both. Delaware judges are appointed to 12-year terms by the governor and the appointments maintain political balance. So if there is a need for a Republican to be appointed and the governor happens to be a Democrat, a Republican will be appointed. 
As for the operations of the court, a single judge is assigned to your case from beginning to end. And once a trial date is set, that trial date is real, and the parties can and should plan on it. Judges are also required to render decisions within 90, de 90 days of submission. In my experience, while you may not always like the result, of course, you can count on your judge to closely read the papers, know the record, be invested at argument, and spend real time and energy on rendering a decision. These features may explain why Delaware is regularly ranked number one by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, for its fair and reasonable litigation environment. I'll now go into a little greater detail about each of the business trial courts, beginning with the Court of Chancery. In order to qualify for jurisdiction in the Court of Chancery, a party must present either an equitable claim, traditionally a share, shareholder's uh, corporate suit, a claim for equitable relief, such as an injunction, or a specialized claim that falls under the special statutory jurisdiction of the Court of Chancery. Legal claims or claims for only money damages cannot be brought in the Court of Chancery unless they happen to be secondary or tag along to a primary equitable claim. Importantly, there are no punitive damages in the, punitive damages in the Court of Chancery and there are no jury trials. Rather, the case is assigned to a chancellor or vice chancellor who will decide your case. There are no opening statements or closing arguments at trial. Rather, there is heavy pretrial and post-trial briefing. And the rules of evidence tend to be more relaxed, particularly with respect to expert testimony, as the judge can simply discount weak, as weak expert testimony without ever really ruling on the issue of admissibility. One of the main unique features of the Court of Chancery is its ability to handle cases on an expedited basis, either by statute or by application to the court. Some of the biggest corporate cases before the Court of Chancery have been resolved on very short time frames, in many days, in many times, um, in a matter of days or weeks. As for procedure in the Court of Chancery, the Court has published guidelines and formed scheduling orders, discovery protocols, and confidentiality agreements for the parties to use as a default. The guidelines also provide some of the formerly unwritten rules of the Court, uh, even down to lawyers' attire. More substantively, the guidelines provide useful guidance on the Court's expectations with respect to um, e-discovery and privilege issues. The overall point of the guidelines is to minimize scheduling issues and discovery disputes so the parties can focus on the merits. The guidelines are available on the court's website and are considered a must read for any court of chancery practitioner. Outside the traditional shareholder lawsuit and corporate statutory litigation that regularly happens in the court of chancery, the court has a few unique features focused on the litigation and resolution of commercial business disputes involving Delaware entities that I think are worth noting. The first is its special statutory jurisdiction over technology disputes. And unlike the traditional equity jurisdiction, under the technology dispute statute, claims for solely money damages are allowed to be brought as long as they exceed $1 million. In order to qualify for technology dispute jurisdiction, the court, the claim must arise out of a technology-related agreement between businesses, consumer claims are not allowed, and one of the parties must be a Delaware business. The parties must consent to the court's jurisdiction, either in the agreement underlying the dispute or in a separate stipulation. The statute defines a technology-related agreement broadly and instructs that the statute should be liberally construed to allow for jurisdiction in the court. Parties with a qualifying technology dispute may seek to have their case litigated in the court or mediated pre-suit, which leads us to the topic of alternative dispute resolution. Like anywhere else, ADR in Delaware involves arbitration and mediation. Two unique features, however, of those options available to the resolution of business disputes involving Delaware companies are the Rapid Arbitration Act and the court's mediation-only 
docket. The Delaware Rapid Arbitration Act, enacted about two years ago, is an effort of the court to accomplish what arbitrations were initially meant to accomplish, a faster and cheaper way for businesses to resolve their disputes. It's seen as perhaps best suited for businesses who have ongoing relationships who are comfortable without extensive discovery and appellate review and, is, and instead just want to achieve a resolution of their dispute and move on. Under the Act, the arbitration uh, is to last no more than six months from the date of appointment of the arbitrator. The Act applies to disputes between businesses only, and one of the businesses needs to be a Delaware business. Also, the arbitration agreement needs to adopt Delaware law and specifically reference the Act. The arbitration procedures outlined in the party's agreement can be as specific as the parties like with the Act to um, provide default provisions that are not covered by the parties. There's no minimum amount in controversy, and the arbitration does not need to happen in Delaware. And there's no need for a confirmation hearing. Rather, the award is deemed confirmed without any action by the parties on the fifth business day after the deadline to file a challenge. The proceedings are confidential and only become public if a party challenges an award. That is, if the parties did not agree to waive appeals altogether or agree to an arbitral appeal. And judicial review is limited. Any judicial challenge to an award is brought directly to the Supreme Court and must be made within 15 days of the award. And the scope of review is limited to those types of grounds under the Federal Arbitration Act. For example, fraud, corruption, or misconduct on the part of an arbitrator. Each of these features is designed to get the parties to a quick decision on their own terms. As for mediation, Delaware business entities can petition to mediate their business dispute pre-suit with a judge of the court, that is, before filing a suit anywhere, like the technology dispute qualifications this is limited to business disputes. One of the parties needs to be a Delaware business. And for disputes involving only money damages, the amount in controversy needs to exceed a million dollars. Naturally, both parties have to consent. The proceeding is confidential. And the mediation is to take place within 60 days of the filing of the petition. The cost to mediate under this statute is uh, a $10,000 filing fee with the petition and $5,000 a day with your assigned judge. Um, given the going rate of mediations and given the expertise that you're getting with the judge of the court, um, that is deemed a reasonable amount. Perhaps less novel, but still useful, the court rules provide for mediation of pending cases before another member of the court. The chancellor or vice chancellor does not charge for his or her services, but again, the court charges $5,000 a day. Again, a reasonable price for the service uh, you get. Moving on to the Superior Court and the CCLD, the common wisdom used to be that if you're going to bring a business case in Delaware, you would do whatever you needed to do to get it into the Court of Chancery. This meant that lawyers would strain to try to make their legal claims sound like an equitable one. With the formation of the CCLD in 2010, that is no longer the case. The CCLD is, uh, was created and, and has proven to be a strong complement to the Court of Chancery for legal claims. Like the Court of Chancery, it includes uniform and predictable procedures, form case management orders, and protocols for the parties to use um, to um, move their case on the merits. All CCLD cases are handled in Wilmington and they get preference in the assigned judge's schedules. In order to qualify for the CCLD, the matter has to involve a business dispute uh, or the parties have had to agree to the CCLG's uh, dur jurisdiction and the amount in controversy needs to exceed a million dollars. Like the Court of Chancery, the CCLD uses uh, case management orders and form protocols um, which uh, help with the efficiency of the party's cases. In terms of arranging to have your corporate and business dispute litigated in Delaware, there are a few ways of accomplishing that. While not an exhaustive list, 
Delaware companies can arrange to have their internal corporate disputes, such as shareholder lawsuits, brought in Delaware. In fact, the Delaware General Corporation Law specifically approves those types of forum selection clauses in the parties uh, in the company's bylaws. Businesses can also include choice of court provisions in their um, contracts, and Delaware courts will enforce those provisions, provided that Delaware has some connection to the parties or the dispute. Lastly, as discussed, a business's status as a Delaware entity affords it certain ability to have its case heard in Delaware under the provisions and statutes we've discussed today. Even if you don't arrange for your disputes to be litigated in Delaware, these recent decisions of the United States Supreme Court dealing with general and specific jurisdiction and in TC Heartland venue in patent litigation may uh, increase the odds that your litigation of whatever nature uh, may end up in Delaware given how many Del uh, businesses call Delaware their home. The last piece of the Delaware business litigation puzzle is the lawyers. Going with our theme, Delaware has a small bar with fewer than 2,500 lawyers in private practice and an even smaller subset of those lawyers involved in the type of business litigation we're discussing today. Delaware follows the rule of not six, but two degrees of separation. And that applies even more so in the legal field among lawyers and judges. This has resulted in a manner of civil and professional interaction among lawyers, which is commonly referred to as the Delaware way. While Delaware courts are national courts are inviting to out-of-state counsel from around the country, uh, the courts expect both Delaware and out-of-state counsel to adhere to those principles. And adhering to them, that is working with the other side where you can, without prejudicing your party's case, um, will go a long way with the court. So, is Delaware really a small wonder? Um, I'm a little biased, but I don't think it's too much to say that if you have to be involved in a corporate or commercial dispute, it's a good pace, a place to have your case resolved. It has specialized judges and courts and unique procedures geared toward the resolution of business disputes. When the circumstances fit, taking advantage of the court system and its procedures may be worth consideration when deciding, among other things, where to form your or your client's business and what governing law, forum selection, and dispute resolution provisions to include in your business contracts. Thank you.